Earlier this year, Volkswagen announced a series of updates to its Polo range. Now, the Polo is Volkswagen's best seller in South Africa and finds around 23,000 buyers every year, which begs the question just why you'd want to change what is clearly a successful formula. Be that as it may, the updates have been applied across the entire Polo range, including the Cross Polo. The visual changes are minor and include new front bumpers and revised chrome trim, while the rear apron also gets a cleaner look. In cross polo form, it still combines wieldy dimensions and practicality with the raised stance and robust apparel of an SUV. However, it's still more urban warrior than all terrainer, with only the extra ground clearance providing a measure of off tar capability. For most buyers, the appeal of this vehicle will be purely cosmetic. Because the Polo sells in droves, the Cross Polo at least provides some visual distinction from the hatchback norm. Also, some buyers will feel that the raised ride height allows improved visibility. As the name suggests, the Cross Polo is more crossover than Dinkum SUV. Sure, it has a slightly raised ride height and it has those plastic mouldings which endow the vehicle with a more macho look. But if you look at the wheels and the low-profile tyres, and if you realise that it's front-wheel drive only, you'll realise that mild gravel is probably the most off-road this vehicle should and will do. As it turns out, the Cross Polo feels quite stable and predictable on dirt, as long as you can steer clear of the stones and ruts that could terminally damage its city slicker wheels. The suspension travel doesn't feel unduly extended, despite that extra ground clearance, which aids stability on tar and dirt. But in essence, the little hatch should be treated as a road machine first and foremost. For a subcompact hatchback, the cabin of the Polo is both airy and well equipped. The elevated seating position also gives you a particularly good view of your surroundings. And intuitive ergonomics, including this multifunction steering wheel, aid overall ease of use. The interior of this latest version is more smartly executed than before and oozes quality. New instruments, an improved sound system and updated control interface are key improvements. The extensive list of features includes sports seats, upmarket trim, a touchscreen display for the infotainment system, electric windows and mirrors, remote central locking and a full complement of active and passive safety equipment. Our test vehicle featured several added cost options including a panoramic sunroof, cruise control, park distance control, fatigue detection and a tow bar which added about 26,000 rands to the asking price. One of the key elements of the updated Polo range is a brand new 1.2 litre turbocharged TSI engine. In this particular application it's good for 81 kilowatts of maximum power linked to 170 newton meters of torque and the gearbox is a six-speed manual driving the front wheels. The new engine reflects the increasing move towards smaller capacity forced induction power plants in the interests of efficiency and thus both reduced fuel consumption and lower exhaust emissions. Combined with sophisticated electronics and variable valve timing, these little power units deliver impressive response with almost no lag and can emulate the tractability of much larger mills but with a reduced appetite of a small engine. The Cross Polo is credited with a combined cycle fuel consumption figure of just 5.1 litres per 100 kilometres, although our test consumption ended up in the mid 6 litre bracket. As we've mentioned before, the Cross Polo feels a lot livelier than you'd expect of a car that's powered by a 1.2 litre engine. The nautical engine time just under 10 seconds, top speed 190 kilometres an hour, but it's really the tractability and the responsiveness of this vehicle that impresses most. Handling is very much in the compact hatch mould, and on the move, the raised ground clearance never seems to compromise the Cross Polo's overall road manners. Turn in is willing, with understeer creeping in progressively as you wind up the wick. The steering feels a little too clinical, but offers reasonable feedback, and overall ride quality is excellent. As we've already mentioned, the Polo is a popular vehicle in South Africa and the latest series of updates should only add to its appeal. But South Africa is also the kind of country that loves its SUVs and I suppose crossovers like this find a target audience as a result. So if you're looking for something that's frugal and peppy, has a fresh face and a comfortable interior and looks a little bit like an SUV, the Cross Polo might just be the right vehicle for you.
The new engine is the most important element of the updated Cross Polo, and despite the small capacity, it delivers brisk performance and good economy. Add the fresher styling front and rear, and an interior that looks and feels upmarket, and the Cross Polo is an attractive choice. But don't take its crossover looks too seriously.